Hi guys, my name is Ari and if you don't know me, my name is Ari and today I am back with another YouTube video. And for today's video, I'm going to be diving into the incredible character of Navier Trovi from We Married Empress. If you followed her story, you'll know that Navier is the embodiment of grace, intelligence, and strength. Everything we look for in a true queen, but beyond her regal poise, there's so much more to Navier that makes her one of the most fascinating protagonists in any webtoon. From her unshakable resilience to her sharp political mind, Navier is a force to be reckoned with, so let's dig deep into what makes her such a powerful queen and a beloved character. Now, when we think about queens and stories, we usually expect someone who's dignified, graceful, and perhaps a bit distant. And while Navier certainly fits that mold on the surface, her strength goes far beyond the superficial qualities we often associate with royalty. Navier's true strength comes from her ability to stay calm and compose in situations that would completely destroy most people. Let's be real here. If any of us were in her shoes, most of us would have snapped by the third chapter. I mean, let's think about it. Navier starts off as the Empress, married to Savishu, the Emperor. Their marriage isn't just a romantic relationship, it's also a political alliance, a partnership that's meant to strengthen the Empire. Navier was trained her entire life for this role, and she performs it flawlessly. She's dedicated, intelligent, and always puts the Empire first. So when Sovishu betrays her by bringing in Rashta, a former slave, as his mistress, it's a complete slap in the face not just as a wife, but as an empress. Most people would lose it, but not Navier. She handles the betrayal with this incredible composure that just leaves you speechless. Like, how exactly is she able to do it? This is where we see Navier's first real display of strength, her emotional control. Let's be honest, if I were Navier and my husband brought in some random woman and started disrespecting me, it, we, we're gonna have to, <laughs> we're gonna have to get rowdy up in here. There would be some chaos, but Navier, she keeps it together. She keeps it cool. She keeps it classy, very mindful, very demure. She doesn't lash out. She doesn't cause a scene. Instead, she holds her head high and carries on with her duties as Empress. It's almost as if she's saying, I'm above this. And in a way, she really is. Navier has the wisdom to know that reacting emotionally wouldn't solve anything. Instead, she continues to do what she does best which is lead with dignity and intelligence. But that doesn't mean Navier is emotionless. One of the most compelling aspects of her character is that she does feel hurt, betrayal, and anger. She just knows how to channel those emotions in ways that don't diminish her. There are moments where we see her break down, where the pain of Sovishu's betrayal gets to her, but what makes Navier so strong is that she never lets those moments define her. She allows herself to feel, but she doesn't wallow at the same time. She picks herself up and she moves forward. That brings us to Navier's political savvy. Let's not forget that she's more than just a queen in name, she's an active player in the political game. From the beginning, we see that Navier has a sharp understanding of how the empire works. She's not just a figurehead, she's actively involved in running the country. Her intelligence is one of her greatest assets, and it's one of the reasons why Sovishu's betrayal feels so unjust. Navier has done everything right. She's been the perfect empress, ruling with wisdom and fairness, and yet she's cast aside for someone like Rashta, who doesn't have any experience, knowledge, or the strength to rule. Now, I know there's a lot of debate about Rashta, but let's 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 be honest. She's not on Navier's level at all. No shade to uh, Rashta fans, but Navier's understanding of politics is light years ahead of her. While Rashta is scrambling to hide her past and hold on to some issue, Navier is playing the long game. She's not just thinking about the present, she's thinking about the future of the empire. And that's what makes her such a powerful leader. Navier isn't driven by personal gain or petty revenge. She's focused on what's best for her and her people. And can we also talk about her relationship with Heinry? I mean, come on now. Heinry is the perfect contrast to Sovishu. Where Sovishu is insecure and constantly trying to control Navier, Heinry recognizes her strength and respects it. He doesn't try to diminish her or make her feel small. Instead, he lifts her up, supporting her without overshadowing her. 
In Heinry, Navier finds a partner who sees her not just as an empress, but as an equal. And I think that's so important because throughout the series, Navier has to deal with people who try to undermine her. So Vishu, Rashta, the court, and everyone is constantly testing her, but Heinry actually has her back 100%. Their relationship is one of the highlights of the series for me because it shows Navier in a different light. With Heinrich, she can let her guard down a bit, at least when he's a bird. She can be vulnerable and she can love without the weight of political duty hanging over her head. But even in love, Navier never loses her sense of self. She remains the strong, independent woman we've come to admire and Heinrich's respect for that is what makes their relationship work. But let's not forget that Navier's journey isn't just about love and politics. It's also about reclaiming her power. When Sovishu asks for a divorce, Navier doesn't beg or plead for him to change his mind. Instead, she just accepts it. This is such a powerful moment in the series because it shows just how much strength Navier has. She knows her value and she's not going to let Sovishu or anyone else take that away from her. Navier's strength also shines through in the way that she handles her public image. Even after the divorce, she remains composed and poised, never allowing herself to be seen as the wronged woman or the scorned ex-wife. She refuses to be defined by Sovishu's betrayal and instead she redefines herself on her own terms. That's the strength of a true queen. She doesn't need validation from others, she knows who she is and she carries herself with that quiet confidence that makes her so admirable. Another key aspect of Navier's strength is her ability to adapt. After the divorce, she doesn't just sit around feeling sorry for herself. She moves on and becomes the queen of the Western Kingdom and continues to rule with the same grace and intelligence that made her such a beloved empress. Navier's ability to pivot and thrive in new circumstances is one of the things that sets her apart from other characters. She's not rigid, she's flexible, and that flexibility allows her to grow stronger with each challenge she faces. What's amazing is that through it all, Navier never loses sight of her core values. She's compassionate, fair, and always puts her people first, even when she's wronged. She never seeks petty revenge. Sure, she's not above making strategic moves to protect herself and her kingdom, but she does it with the empire in mind. Everything Navier does is calculated, but not in a self-serving way. It's always with the bigger picture in mind, and that's actual strength knowing when to fight and when to let go, knowing when to assert power and when to show restraint. But let's take a moment to appreciate just how relatable Navier is as well. Even though she's a strong, composed queen, she has her moments of vulnerability. We've all had times where we felt undervalued or taken for granted, and Navier's story reminds us that we can still rise above those moments. Her strength doesn't come from being perfect or invulnerable, it comes from her ability to persevere and keep moving forward, no matter how hard things get. Navier teaches us that strength isn't just about power or dominance, it's about resilience, it's about knowing who you are and refusing to let anyone else define you. It's about rising above the pettiness, the portrayals, and the hardships and staying true to yourself. That's why Navier is such an inspiring character. She shows us that being a queen isn't about wearing a crown or sitting on a throne. It's about the strength of a character, the wisdom to lead, and the courage to keep going, even when the world seems to be against you. In conclusion, Navier Trovi is the definition of strength. Not just because of her title, but because of her inner fortitude, whether she's dealing with political problems, personal betrayal, or the challenges of leadership, she remains steadfast and true to herself. Navier's journey is one of perseverance, grace, and quiet power, and it's what makes her one of the most compelling characters in The Married Empress. Her strength is the kind that inspires us to be better and to rise above our circumstances, and to never lose sight of who we are. So I'm gonna ask, what do you guys all think? Is Navier the ultimate example of a strong queen or is she not? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching and bye guys.